western juniper trees have been steadily encroaching on meadows and valleys in the greater Oahe County area over the last 50 years. As a result, juniper trees are consuming habitat that normally would be used by greater sage grouse, wildlife, and cattle. Aerial surveys show that juniper density has increased three to five fold in Hawaii County compared to historical levels. The absence of fire has accelerated the invasion. Something has to be done. When we started putting out the fires to protect our properties and stuff, the junipers had an opportunity to move and expand. It's like a wildfire now, the way they're expanding. Sage grouse are listed as a candidate species under the Endangered Species Act, so attention is being focused on improving habitat for the birds to increase their numbers. The Hawaii Mountains are considered a core area for sage grouse with 250 leks, or mating grounds, and historically robust populations. Juniper encroachment is considered to be one of the top three threats to sage grouse survival in the area. Juniper trees have a direct negative impact on sage grouse nesting habitat and brood rearing habitat in the meadow areas. The leks tell you where they want to be and the bird likes to go find a nest site within a mile or two of a sage grouse dancing ground where the reproduction takes place. They look for sage and bitter brush like we have here in the background and that's where they hide their nest. But they will not select the site at all if there's a tall juniper tree there. And so as a juniper encroaches a meadow, they have to vacate it. I mean, they flat out won't stay there. The tall juniper trees make sage grouse nervous about predators. The uh, juniper tree uh, to them is just another place that they know a predator can sneak up on them. One of the number one predators for sage grouse is actually the raven. And so the raven will perch there as well, follow the bird back to the nest site, and then steal the eggs. Historically, the Bureau of Land Management has cut down juniper trees to address the problem with an intent to follow up those treatments with prescribed burning. They have treated about 33,000 acres with that method so far. But on a smaller scale, Talsma says the best solution involves grinding up the trees. It's called juniper mastication. David Bunker of Branch Enterprises explains. Mastication basically is chewing something to a pulp. Our traco machines are based on a, what I call a thunk theory. They have two great big blades on a, on a wheel. Um, each blade weighs 46 pounds a piece, and we just hammer the tree to death as it's going around and around. It's important that all of the tree is removed so it can't grow back. One of the main things about a juniper is you can't leave any green on it or it'll grow. So we make sure the very bottom of the tree is done first. Juniper trees are not only encroaching on meadow habitat, they also consume a large amount of water. Rancher Dennis Stanford likes the results. It's a big help because it not only brings up the water table, for one thing, because when you kill a juniper tree, you're definitely taking something that is wicking all the moisture out of the sagebrush, as well as the forbs, grasses, everything else. It's a, so it's a win-win situation. It's more forage for the cows. It's better wildlife habitat for all wildlife. Cost share funds from the Natural Resources Conservation Service are available to remove juniper trees from meadow areas on private land. The control work fits into the overall NRCS Sage Grouse Special Initiative in Idaho and 10 other western states. $16 million are available for the recovery effort. That gives ranchers extra funding to address the juniper problem. Mastication costs about $80 to $250 per acre depending on tree density. Sage Grouse is a big component of it, I mean, because that gives us the tool to do what we're doing and to try to help. And it definitely is helping. My brother a year ago has got a picture of a sage grouse nesting where they did the mastication. It's a win for the livestock, it's a win for the wildlife, and hopefully down the road that'll keep us from listing sage grouse. We find out from uh, talking to the ranchers that, hey, birds have been coming to this year, this site for years. Then it kind of went away in the last decade or two because the juniper encroached. Uh, nearby here we surveyed a site that had over 200 birds on it in the fall of the year. And that's about by the crow fly, just three or four miles from here. So we know once we open it up, we'll get the bird use back. The Hawaii County Sage Grouse Working Group believes that grinding up the juniper trees produces the best and quickest results. 
We're seeing a quick response. The forbs and grasses are growing within a year after treatment. You can see that we're getting growth already right next to the stump. This is blue bunch wheatgrass is coming on. This is Idaho fescue or good fescue. That's what the ranchers like to see, that good grass uh, for wildlife. I like to see it as a wildlife biologist because it's important for a variety of species. We've got sage grouse use in this um, meadow, but we also have elk here, antelope and mule deer. Juniper mastication treatments on another ranch in the Owahis also has produced positive results. The property in Bull Basin is owned by George and Donna Bennett. We doubled the size of the meadow, so we jumped from a 200 acre meadow to over 400 acre meadow. One of our target species to benefit down here is aspen. Aspen, quaking aspen is a native tree. It only occupies about 1% of the landscape in the Owahis but it has about 60% of the birds and the mammals go through it. And so opening up an aspen stand benefits a ton of other species as well. The Nature Conservancy, which is a member of the Oahe County Sage Grouse Working Group, is monitoring the results of juniper control efforts to document improvements along with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Idaho Department of Fish and Game, and NRCS. About 5,000 acres of juniper encroachment areas have been treated on private lands in the Oahis for the last several years, with more to come. We want to bring this range back into its best ecological condition. 